plants. They purify air, filter water, provide food and shelter. Plants brighten up our spaces and our moods as well. Most importantly, plants do the absolutely necessary job of regulating the environment, which make them indispensable to life. For the last 10 years, I've honed my farming skills at various places. Organic farms in Australia, urban farms across Singapore. While I started out convinced that farming was all about food production, it didn't take me long to realise that I was wrong. So there is a famous saying by a Japanese farmer, farming is not about the cultivation of plants, but it's about the cultivation and perfection of human beings. Oh, wow! <laughs> And slowly as I went on this journey of learning to farm and learning to appreciate food, I actually feel that it's a nurturing and cultivation of people, seeing people come together, that makes me really, really happy. Slanted eating thing. <laughs> what do you think? Can? Yeah. Even though the garden was a personal project, I've always wanted to have people involved. I think at some point, the, the vision of what I wanted to do is way bigger than what I can do by myself, and I definitely need more people to be part of this vision. Have a check from the back. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I think most of us didn't know each other from before. Some were actual neighbours in the same block, but about half the team were strangers. Definitely was a little bit awkward or a bit cold at the start, you know, uh, and it took a bit of time to warm up. Thank you. I think farming really, really does bring people together. You know, there's something humbling about doing a very difficult and strenuous activity together that breaks down all barriers. You know, everybody is the same. You know, after all that sweating and that, that hard work, it definitely formed the bond together. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, thank Dan. Thanks, Wong. Hey. Yeah. You're all done. Yeah, keep, keep. So what do you think? It has only been two months since the small community of gardeners I've recruited started working the grounds on this barren piece of land. Crops are sprouting, but so are minor disagreements. You know, we are, we are trying to set out the garden, right? So I want to get your ideas on whether we should uh, have it open or closed. You know, most of the community gardens, they are closed, right? I'm hoping that we can do it open. Uh, so are, are you worried about, like, you know, anything happening? We if, are if worried open? about uh, all these uh, small, small things will happen. <laughs> what, what, what kind of thing are you worried about? Like people uh, just walk in and, you know, harvest whatever they want. You you saw this happening yeah. before in, in our area? Yeah, I got, I got one uh, uncle passed by my, my garden downstairs. Told me he got one, he got one uh, chili plant very big, you know, mm. where he planted downstairs. The whole chili plant got 100 over chili, one day gone. Wow. Yeah, they harvest everything. <laughs> Not say they harvest partially, you know, some people are being very inconsiderate. Nah. Maybe we can improvise, put some posters, say this is for the garden use or what. Like we can state, or please do not kill the plant. If you need to harvest, then take what you need, but not kill the plant. Nah. Many of the stories that I've heard so far, even people in my gardening uh, team uh, are mostly of negative stories. Produce being stolen, uh, people being very upset about all these different conflicts. So trying to change that or, or inspire a more open way of thinking, that has been something I'm continually working on. And I think the best way is, is to try and experiment and then leave a bit of time to see whether it works or it doesn't work. Try everything we can. Uh, adjust along the way, and if really, really we, we cannot anymore, if things really get stolen all the time, then uh, we can think about it uh, later down the line. But I really like, like how you are coming together and we are having this very open mindset. I, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. This is my first time managing a community garden, and I think it's clear how my skills in nurturing plants are not exactly transferable to the cultivating of relationships. 
so I've decided to seek out inspiration from the veterans. Some of the long bean ready. What's so interesting, long beans on a floor? Yeah, this is, this is the uh, bush, bush long bean. Oh, wow, I've so, never seen uh, You can have us some? Okay. There's two here, yeah. So we have a mixture, red bean, honey yeah. bean. <laughs> Madam Kamisa has been the leader of this rooftop garden since 2012. Because under the Southwest CDC Green Spaces Grant, we get the grant to buy the soil seeds and then I'll make use of it to do the outreach to all the schools. Yeah. They will come here and work with us. And over the past nine years, she has built a thriving garden that's abundant with produce and a community brimming with enthusiasm. I try a little bit, okay? Mmm! Nice, nice. Hey. Please come, I show you how to take the tapioca. Tapioca, more some chanko work. Yeah, it'll be hard job, love, huh? Before I love you, hard job before you can eat, okay? <laughs> oh wow! It's just right there. Oh, it's very loose. It's all sand. So we can have a, our dessert later, Chris. Oh wow. We just steam it and then later we put some sugar, salt and a coconut milk. Mm. So it'll be like a Thai dessert. <laughs> yummy, oh, yummy. <laughs> Got it. The weather was horrible, it was horrible downpour. But despite all that, the, the aunties, they were just so gung-ho. The experience here working with the aunties together in the garden, it was just so much fun. That whole community spirit was, was something I really, really enjoyed. You know, Madam Kamisa, I'm also starting my own community garden. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the problems that you faced before, I'm also facing now. Like people not really wanting to uh, have it very uh, open. People want to say, oh, I want to fence it up. You know, do you have any advice for me? We started also without fencing, but along the way, we, uh, a lot of people vandalized the plant and then steal the fruits, all that. Lah. So uh, I think being a farmer is not easy, right? You yeah, know? correct. There's a it's lot a, of effort and, yeah, and love that lot, you put lot. into Then that. when the, the crops are missing, uh, of course, most of the elderly that work here, they feel very disappointed. Mm. Very disappointed, yes. I mean, uh, then we encourage, uh, when we look up, we encourage everyone to join us. Everyone can garden. We work together and we will share the harvest. Let's say today your share is just four long beans. That four long beans you can just chop up and make into an egg omelette that yeah. you can savour it. Yeah. So, uh, Madam Kamisa's gardening philosophy is simple. Everyone can play a part in the garden. If you can't do hard labour, there are lighter tasks. If gardening is not your strength, you can decorate the garden with your artwork. And if the garden is not where you belong, there's always the kitchen. For today's dish, we catch our own tilapia. Yeah. So we just make asam fish. So this is exactly from garden to table. And you know, when, when you cook with everybody, how do you feel? Oh, it's good because, oh, it's good. Uh, I mean, like, at home, right, uh, when you cook, it's yourself, right, everything you do, right. Down here, uh, everybody got their own task. Uh. Uh, when you enjoy, uh, I mean, this, this kind of uh, bonding, uh, I think it's like, together we are stronger. Yeah, <laughs> right? less to do as well. Yeah, less work and then uh, more fun. Down here, uh, it's not uh, only uh, gardening, it's about exchanging recipes, you know. Like sometimes when we have white radish, right, the radish, then uh, the other Chinese auntie will say, oh, let's make carrot cake. Uh, then all of them also look forward, no? The, yeah. the Malays or that look forward to see how the carrot cake has been done. Then Everybody's the, learning yes. and sharing all the yeah. time. And that's the fun of, of yes, the whole that's community. The fun, yeah. Makan time! Ready, makan time! <laughs> You know, when I first started on this journey of having my own community garden with the intention of bringing people together through cooking and through the sharing of food, it was a very fancy and very audacious vision. And after seeing it actually play out today, and actually being part of that, that communal gathering and eating together, I feel very much inspired that it can be done. And the tapioca is very creamy. Like, uh, yeah, the, the... normally the tapioca is very fibrous and tough. Uh, yeah, this is... But this is not... A... Oh my, all the hard work of uh, pulling it is worth it. Yeah, it's worth it, huh? Mmm. Wow, oh, the fish is very nice, eh? Very fresh. Really, really. You try. Yeah. See, you want more fish? Yeah, a bit more fish, yeah. Okay, thank you. We 
very honest, I'm actually very, very overwhelmed with um, a lot of emotions because the sense of community that Madame Kamesa has created is, is really, really deep and powerful. You talk about all the problems and, and challenges of gardening, but now when you sing together, it, like all the worries are no more. Yes, of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, the, the food will bring people together. Exactly. And then uh, the friendship, uh, the friendship. Like when one of the uncle didn't come, right? Then uh, auntie was saying, hey, why the uncle uh, never come? Uh? Then we find out that he's not well. So we were just, happened that we have some harvest, we just go and visit him, then buy some fruits, and then we bring to him. And he was so touched, you know? The core of this garden is really the people. There is just so much synergy between everybody. There's so much care for one another. It's just really authentic and very sincere. I never imagined how a space can be transformed to be so inclusive. I think Madame Kamisa just has the people's heart beyond and above everything else. Yes, nice. The bonding, the friendship. Mm. My roots is here already. I'm rooted here. Yeah. Because of the bond we form, it's just like a family right. here. So mm. when I was away for a few days, on holidays, the first thing I do when I come back, I have to visit the garden. Farming brings a certain satisfaction that whatever you grow and whatever you eat, so you, you are you are a creator of life. And also you are taking ownership in our food security. And that's very powerful. It's freedom, ultimately, I think it is. When I first started out, my intentions were to grow food for the community. And the idea was to help buffer um, for food security for Singapore. Food, however, is not the only thing we need for survival. This是很好了 Mm. A self-taught expert on Chinese herbs, Mr. Ng believes that plants have the power to heal, and regular consumption can improve our general well-being, or in my case, act as a character-building tool. Let's苦口凉药啊。哦。嗯。哇，你整个咬咬下来。啊。哦，这个很苦哦，有点不习惯。哦，我们做这种啊，也要吃下去，对我们健康吗？好，苦苦的不要健康，也是拿来保健吗
Yeah, oh, like this, is it? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. inside. So we just pull out the weeds. Uh, okay. Every single time I'm here, I learn something new about the garden. I knew some. I learn something new about these herbs as well. Well, how to know? Uh, which one is the herb and which one is the weed? I know. I <laughs> I know I do this one a very long time. Ago. <laughs> I come here to learn from him actually. Yeah. How do you actually go off and care for the community? How do you make sure that you have to do that through example? You know, he's, he's uh, our inspiration um, to keep, keep his vision going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're hoping to spread this mission of medicinal herb gardens uh, throughout Singapore. The vision is, uh, you know, anybody, whether you live in a HDB or a condo or a private house, any Singaporean would have then access to this low-cost healthcare, which is right in front of us. You know, um, for us to get back into the soil, get back into the ground, for us to start being together as a community and get stuck in on stuff, you know, and get involved, be among each other, talk, share, plant, harvest, cook, you know, and I think that's the way to foster a lot of this community spirit. What is this uh, good for, Mr. Ng? Yeah, protect the lungs. Oh, protect the lungs? Uh, right. What I've learned from Mr. Ng from the herb garden was how he was able to bring people together in a way that was very open, you know, there was no politics or no, no agendas. People just wanted to contribute their time and their service and enjoy the company of each other and, and learn and appreciate the, the process of gardening. I'm probably biased. But slogging it out in the garden is my idea of a perfect get-together. But if farming isn't up everybody's alley, maybe an adventure in the wild could be a way to bond? This is actually one of the most rustic parks we have in Singapore. We actually just want to bring people closer to nature and help them to understand the kind of biodiversity that we have in our own backyard. So it's really great to have a place like Coney Island in Singapore where it's kind of unspoiled, untouched mm. and we can bring families in and show them that we actually do have these kind of cool animals and cool spaces. Alright Chris, we've arrived at our first stop. Alright. Yeah, so do you know anything about this tree that we can see up here? I have no clue but I've always wondered about it because it looks like a temperate tree. Right? So it doesn't feel like Singapore yeah. at all. Yeah, so this tree is called the Casuarina tree also known as the Rue tree and this is really cool. The leaves are actually like very shrunken and small and spiky. So, I have a microscope here today. You brought a microscope? Yes, I did. I that brought a microscope on a insane. hike. insane. Yeah, so my first mission for you here today is to help me find some casuarina leaves as well as their seed pods. Alright. So the seed pods look like little durians. They're brown and they're about this big. I think I spot something. Yes. Is this it? Yes, that's it. Very good. Yeah, so these are actually the leaves of the casuarina tree. So, so these are the stems? Yes, the green parts are the stems. Yeah, and the white bits that you see in between, yeah. those are actually where the leaves are. What? Right? Yeah, I don't understand how this <laughs> works. It's so bizarre. So weird. So these here are the seed pods. You oh, that's so like cute. It's like a durian, yeah, right? It really looks like a durian. So they're kind of sharp and prickly like a durian. Yes. Um, those open gaps, that's actually where the seed pod has split open and very tiny little seeds have come out. Ah. Yeah, so these guys are actually um, dispersed by wind. That is so interesting. Yeah. So I can see how experiencing nature together can develop and cultivate this interest and bring people together. Over there! Oh! Is that the one? Yeah, that's the fish poison tree. Alright. The leaves are huge. Right? Okay, so this tree is called the fish poison tree because the fruits were actually used to poison fish. What? What yeah. do you mean? So traditional fishermen, they yeah. actually used to go and find this tree specifically to look for the fruit. Uh -huh. And the fruit is very special. I have one in my backpack. So over here, this brown thing that I have is the fish poison fruit. Oh my goodness! This thing. Yeah. That is Huge! Yeah, don't eat it. This is actually quite small for the fish poison fruit. The fruit is called saponin. Uh -huh. And it was actually used to stun fish. 
So these traditional fishermen, they will go out specifically to find this fruit. After they find it, dry it up and then they'll actually toss it into their fishing area. Mm -hmm. It will stun the fish, make them a bit like drunk, tired, then yeah. they will float up to the surface. Oh. So it's very easy for me to just take a net and scoop everything, you can catch them. So that's one of the things that I like to share with the kids. Yeah. This time if you see a fish you want to catch, right, <laughs> find more of these. Then that's you can go so and catch interesting. It. But most of the time, Armed with an arsenal of nature facts and activities, Si Ying has conducted many tours, some more unique than others. Yes, actually, I, I did a private tour for couples before. It was quite fun. Uh, it was a bit awkward because I wasn't sure if they were a couple or not. But it was just one guy, one girl, and on Valentine's Day, and then they went into Tidal, so like, I went and gave them all the more romantic facts. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> this right here is the sea hibiscus. Oh. Yeah, are you wondering why it's called the sea hibiscus? Yeah, exactly. It means nowhere near the sea, right? Yeah. It's because of the flower. Oh. Right, looks like a hibiscus, right? So I have a bit of a treasure hunt activity for you right now. There's an insect here that likes to live on the sea hibiscus. It's called the cotton stainer bug. Mm -hmm. So when you see a heart-shaped leaf, that's a sea hibiscus leaf, mm -hmm. and there might be a whole bunch of them under the leaves. Ah. So any heart-shaped leaf you see, just flip it over. See if you can find any cotton stainer bugs. Okay. So usually they can be found along the fruits because the fruits of this plant are quite sweet. Is that it? That one, that one. Tall people privileges. I can't reach. Here we go. Here. No, no, left, left. No, no, it's definitely not. It's very different. That one, the bud is very round when they're babies. So it's completely different. I don't see any of them. Ah, do you see that? It just, it just disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I don't think we're having any luck here. Shall we try another pet? Yeah, let's try another pet. Okay. So this is actually a really fun activity that I usually do with families. Mm -hmm. Get everybody engaged, get your hands in the plant and look for insects. Yeah. And it's interesting to see what kind of different things we can observe in the plant. Ah, we're in luck. There's more sea hibiscus there. Oh, this is huge. Let's check it. Whoa, it's, it's massive. Yeah, there's so many sea hibiscus, you'll for sure find them somewhere. Oh, hey, I see one. Hey, hey, hey. Come right, over there. Ah, I see, running away. Yeah. yeah, so you see they really like the fruits. Yeah. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's two of them. There's a mating one here. When we found the insects, we were really excited, you know, and, and I think that moment of joy pretty much reflected that sense of discovery and that sense of amazement that can bring people together. Now, overall, the, the experience was very nice, very special because I think Coney Island doesn't look like Singapore, like the Casuarina trees. It makes you feel like you're in a temperate forest. Yeah, it's just really nice to be surrounded by that quietness and that peacefulness. Growing up, the idea of locally grown food felt like a foreign concept to me. But as I spent my adult life farming, 
I started envisioning a more resilient food future for Singaporeans. Better farming methods may bring us closer to that goal, but I believe a stronger community spirit of sharing will play a huge role too. I also harvested quite a bit. Yeah. I can pass to you. Yeah. First. On that day, I can cook, cook your green bean soup what? for the party. Oh, have yeah. you tried this already? Yeah, this, we are yeah. trying. Oh, you try yeah. it? Try this. It's called uh, cranberry hibiscus. So this is eating in salad, raw. Oh, salad yeah. is mixed yeah. together. Yeah. Or you can dry it and put it into tea. Even though this garden is quite young, I think it's just been a couple of months since we started um, planting stuff in. We've actually had an abundance of vegetables that I think our, our core team is already bored of eating. <laughs> we really want to bring more people. I mean, at least the four of us and, and more want to gather, right? So we need a bigger space. I also really want to explore whether there can be alternative ways to distribute produce. You know, could there be some technology that I can use to make that, that process a lot more efficient and effective? And I'm not the only one grappling with these issues. They call themselves the corridor farmers, because that's their dream. To have a farm along every corridor in every corner of Singapore. As an urban farm, growing edibles is not the only thing the corridor farmers do. From farm tours to workshops, they are constantly coming up with new ideas to spread the spirit of farming within a community. Their latest project is a system that incentivizes community farmers to grow more greens. Well, the thing is, uh, the community inspires me a lot. So I wanted to provide micro-opportunities for these uncle and aunties. I always think that their produce are of certain substance and quality. They should be actually allowed to, you know, get back some money from this produce that they actually grow by sharing with others. Hey Fred! Hey, hi How's Rob. things going? Good, thanks. Wow. Hey Chris. Wow, nice. Yeah, Show so... The basil are actually quite good for harvest now. And it's fresh, we don't use uh, pesticides here, so no chemicals. Yeah, it smells so good. Yeah. Yeah. Rock Solution is a mobile phone app. You can do a photo taking of this basil. So Chris will be holding on, I'll just take a photo of... Still in its testing phase, Rock is trying out the app with other farmers to iron out any possible technical issues. Micro farmers who have excess produce, they can list it in the platform itself. And interested parties who are interested in the produce can actually link up, communicate with the farmer, and then acquire the, this produce. Okay, giving away. Condition, freshly harvested today. Yes. All right, description, self-collect? Self-collect. <laughs> A lot of times we have neighbors who are interested in your chili, let's say for example, but you may not be around every time, 24-7. So how do we reach out to them? It's through a platform. And then we can set the current location, which is at uh, Sprout Hub right now. Yeah, 102 yeah. Henderson Road. So it's oh, cool. Yep, cool. Then we can just submit. People will be able to call. If let's say you lock in. Who's? Very easy. Yep, that's about it. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing your Thank you, Rob. You are welcome. <laughs> so convenient. Yep. I believe at the heart of farming is a spirit of sharing. Be it sharing with someone in your vicinity or giving to someone in need. Nothing beats the joy of sharing a bountiful <laughs> harvest with others. So guys, where are we going? Oh, we're going to Singapore indoor farms right now. We're going to uh, collect some vegetables from uh, the farmer Joshua and we're going to send it to Jurong Spring Community Centre later. Okay. okay. Ah, we're here. Yep. Let's go. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Hey Joshua, we're here. Hey, hi, how are hey. you? Come, hey. come, come. So fast, Tuesday again, right? Yeah. So why is the vegetable today? Okay, today I have chai sing, xiao pai chai, and have nai pai also. Oh, nai pai. Come, oh. come, let's open the bag. These are fresh vegetables that Singapore indoor farms have in excess. Instead of throwing them away, Rock and his team distribute this produce to people in need. Nai pai and xiao pai chai harvested today. Looks yeah. amazing. So we don't harvest too early. Yeah. Make sure everything is fresh. Yes, thank good. you so much. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, so thanks for coming. Yeah, good. Thanks. Donating food to charity. That was something that uh, got me thinking because initially I did think about uh, giving food to the community, uh, but I didn't really know how to. As I tag along with the corridor farmers in their mini food donation drive, one thing became clear. To grow your own food is empowering, but to give some of this away to others who need it more than myself is perhaps a duty that I, as a farmer, should take on. You know, I really enjoyed spending the day with you. What you showed me from harvesting the produce, 
and giving it to the people who need it most. That really encompasses the spirit of farming. Yeah, so really appreciate it. And thanks for bringing me out. Thanks. It's great having you yeah. here. Thanks. thanks. Thank you so much. Well, the garden progress has been exceptionally fast. I've been so surprised with how fast the plants are growing and how well they are, they are taking into the environment um, and how fast the biodiversity has, has come in. I think the team has done this amazing job building the very, very important stuff. Like when Joe um, decided to install the trellis and build the trellis, it was just mind-blowing. How's it on your side? Uh, Joe's side, okay? Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All these little experiences and activities that the team has done has, has really made me so proud. And I feel like a proud father almost. One, two, three. Okay. It looks good to me. Whoa! Wow. This is amazing. Wow. Hi, guys. Hey, yeah. hi, Clarence. Hi. Uh, this, is, this is my gardening team. Hello. This is Bong, yeah. Jen, and Jean. Hi. Yeah. Hi, welcome. So, this place is meant for you to cross. You're meant to walk across the stones. Yeah, yeah, just be careful. Yeah, don't walk too fast. Yeah, walk carefully. Okay. After months of hard work, it's time for the team to take a break from gardening chores. Wow, so beautiful. So I've organised a small bonding session on another rooftop garden. I'm giving you four different samples of unifloral honey. A landscaper by day, Clarence has converted this rooftop into an oasis of sorts. A space for people to bond over a shared experience of discovering and enjoying nature. There's different elements here. I see you know, papaya trees, mulberry trees. Yeah. Um, there's the edible element. Yes. And then there's like bees. So, so what is it all here for? Yes, so we do more than just farming. We don't supply food and put it in the supermarkets, for example. Uh, what we do is we have these edibles. Yes, they are edibles, but it's more for garnishings for our farm-to-table experience. So the whole thing is called the rooftop farm experience where we run a experiential activity. For those who can't travel overseas for holidays, Clarence hopes that the sundowner can fill part of that void. Because there are always new things to learn and discover right at our doorstep. Any of you scared of bees? No. Jen, are you scared of bees? No, I, you're always waiting for bees at your plant, right? <laughs> Feels like a spacesuit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First activity, understanding about bees. And that's where we donned the suits and got to learn about how bees uh, live in our environment. Here's what it looks like inside a, a nest, okay? This was picked up from a primary school in uh, Bradder. They suddenly saw it there one morning and then they were a bit scared, so I went in to rescue it. Lah. This is a nest because they naturally colonise this space. So you can see this is the comb, one, two, three, four, five, six. As the colony expands, they will build more and more comb. So all these are female bees. And what they're doing is they're taking care of the, the eggs and the queen that is inside here. Inside all the babies also, when they are hatched, they become worker bees and then they go and do their job. There's only one queen for every colony. One queen? Only one queen. Only one so queen. No king. There's no king. The queen can see. Uh. You can if you're lucky, but very seldom you will get to see it. Uh. You can't lucky, but lucky. Uh. When I was looking at my team, you know, I could see Wong and Jen just so curious about the beekeeping experience and you're just shooting Clarence with all these questions. And it actually made me feel very happy because it's nice to, to know that I'm feeding their interest in, in gardening. The last part is the sunset cocktails. Okay, so we drink, have some drinks while watching the sunset. Very refreshing. It's really refreshing. Yeah. Wow. The nice. sourness of the lemon makes yeah. it refreshing. Yeah. You want to smell, right? Most of the times that I experienced with the team was working so hard in the garden, toiling away. So this is actually the first time I was able to step out of that whole grind and be actually quite relaxed. Cheers. Cheers. This is a nice cool end to a long hot day. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks everyone.
Need to loosen it before you can pull. Huh? Historically, there's always been a communal spirit in farming. To work the land, share the food. So that got me thinking, what is it like for the houseplant community? Can community spirit be present without the sharing of food as a unifier? Hi Lindy, hi Brian. Oh, hey. So I decided to hit up my new friend Brian, whose plant collection left a lasting impression. Turns out, not only is he an avid plant collector, he's quite the keen sharer as well. He uses social media to share plant updates, dish out care tips, and also organize plant swaps. So I wanted to use this platform, kind of like build like a network and we can be friends and chat more about uh, plants that interest us. It's quite satisfying to be able to meet others who have the same interests in the same kind of plants. Today, I'm tagging along one of these plant swaps to meet the community. And the best part, bring home some free plants. Wow, look at all these plants. So to this plant swap, I was thinking we can do it like lottery style, where we'll pick numbers from a hat, and then based on your numbers, you get first dips on the plants over here. But before we start, we can kind of introduce the plants that we brought today first. So the objective of this plant swap is to be able to share and exchange different plants and to understand how these plants grow, what kind of environmental conditions they need. <laughs> is that yours? Yeah. This, uh, this is a philodendron heterocrespidon. So uh, one thing unique about this is the leaves get really large as they grow older. So that's why they are quite highly sought after also. How big do the leaves get? Uh, Probably half half of my body. Half of your body? Yeah. Wow, that's huge. Is it so it's a very expensive plant? Oh I got it for four twenty. Like four hundred and twenty dollars. Yes, that's right. Four hundred and twenty dollars? That's right. Oh my goodness. Mine cost twelve dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, eight dollars. So who's the lucky one today? You want to pick first? Yeah, you go ahead, lah. don't worry. Okay. That's it. Okay. Ready. The energy at the plant swap was amazing. There was a lot of interest in each other's plants. So all that interest built up and it made the whole experience very enjoyable. So maybe number one. Okay, I think I will go for this. Oh. The Calidia. I really love the very colours. Nice yeah, thanks. I think I'll pick this one for my mom to try. I think she would like this. I'll take this one. I think I'll get the biggest one here. Hey. Yeah. I'm gonna get the expensive one. Yay! I was actually very surprised that the plant community was very young, but you know, the amount of knowledge that they had was amazing. And they usually climb on trees. They all shared tips and supported each other on how they think they can make the plant grow better. It's an amazing thing to have a community like that. This is so fun, yeah. Yeah. It's fine? Yeah. yeah. Is this space a bit too big? Or do you think it's okay? Along this journey, I started to really gain an appreciation for ornamental plants, for house plants. I think there are certain kinds of forms that non-edible plants have that can make a space look very special. You know, it can change the look and feel of a space. So I've decided to dedicate a space in the rooftop garden to ornamental plants. Okay. Oh, nice. So maybe y'all can recommend me some flowers or, or plants that might oh, be nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. With just a few days more to the grand opening of the rooftop garden, I've roped in two of my neighbours, Auntie Zer and Auntie Anna, to help. This one is quite rare. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole place here only have one orange. Yeah. Right? This one is difficult to find. The oh, Sing Tzu. Mm, you don't have one. You want This one is morning, ma, open. Yeah, at uh, 4 o'clock to close. close yeah. oh. 4 o'clock close. Four yeah, that's why they call it the four o'clock uh, ah. flowers, ah. Yeah, four, yeah, yeah. Four o'clock flowers. This one is also Ah, this one the the stem look ah, good. Nice, ah, this one. Ah, the stem look healthy, <laughs> healthy and a lot of branches. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this one's good. So the garden, I felt like it needed more colors and more life, and flowers would be the best way to to have that beauty. And it's since Auntie Zer and Auntie Anna, they love flowers so much, I thought it would be really nice to have them contribute something, both in ideas and experience and expertise to this garden. And hopefully they feel proud when they see these flowers that they have chosen in the garden. Hey guys. Yeah, hey, so you know, because we planted in some new plants, right, so the soil is a bit empty. So this is some coconut fibre to protect the soil. You can use it as a, a mulch. So we just like, tear a little bit like that, right? Then we just cover it up. After months of preparation, today is the day I've been looking forward to. I'm hosting a garden party to showcase this space to the community. 
and my team is putting the finishing touches before the neighbours arrive. Every time I, I touch this, I'm like, oh, feels like hair <laughs> that I don't have. <laughs> this bit until now, I still haven't watered it, you know. Still growing yeah. very well. I think the grass really helps to hold the water in the soil. The garden, when we first saw it, was some parts were very bare. They were like um, open, bare soil. Uh, there wasn't much going on. And then other areas, it was very messy. You know, there are a lot of uh, plants that sprouted out quite randomly. Plants that we didn't plant, they were all from food waste that, that, that grew. Now there's a lot more flowers, there's a lot more colour. And within the structures, we are also adding some plants to it. So there's a lot more depth as well. Not just vertical depth, but visual depth to the space many, many times more beautiful and lush and complete. So, <laughs> it's way beyond my expectations. I, I'm just very, very happy for, for the current outcome of it. I'm going to place this windmills. You want to have a thing at the front? Okay, let's go. I really hope that this garden can fulfil my, my dream of just making it a very, very nice space. Anyone can just come in, interact with it, and then walk away either feeling inspired or feeling joyful about just being in that space. Please. Hey, Auntie. Give me Wow. Thank you. You bought it or you bought it? I bought it. I bought it. Oh, you bought it from where? Wow, thank you. Also, I, I definitely want to create a community uh, from this garden. You know, I think that space where people can come and share have us work together, that would be a really, really nice thing. Hi everyone, welcome to my garden. The garden's name is called Nootopia. Uh, it means utopia, which is like the perfect world, it's like a paradise. So this space is meant to be like a paradise when you step inside. Can I have us Kicking off the garden's grand opening is a tour of the space. So this garden, as you can see, it's a, very, a bit like a forest. Yeah, things are growing in different layers. This first bit is the herb garden. So we have culinary herbs like rosemary. You can touch and smell. Randall, you can smell it. Yeah, basil. Uh, this is ulam raja. And then we have on the on the railings we'll put climbing plants. So that's a long bean, uh, passion fruit. So over time, the whole space will be utilized and you'll block the sun and the wind also from this area. Yeah. So uh, this this is a community compost. So uh, some of you like Auntie Annie has been giving the food waste here. And so over time, we'll flip it and we'll turn it every few days. And we'll put all that beautiful black gold onto the plants. So all this furniture, like the tool shed and this frame, we all hand-built. You know, we use a workshop and we cut all the wood ourselves. So everybody really was involved in this uh, process. And so uh, the last part is, it's this walkway. So as you donate your compost, as you walk out, it's a really nice garden um, with all the flowers here. So come, we can walk through this and we'll, we'll finish our garden tour. <laughs> okay. Okay, what's that? Wow, so beautiful. From beautiful rooftop gardens to plant swaps, the use of modern technology to traditional Chinese herbs. Wow, this is really cool. I've met people who share the same passion I have in growing plants. But I've come to realize that a thriving garden is not the destination. It's the community behind the garden that matters the most. This is a nice cool end to a long hot day. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. And now, it's finally time for our own sundowner. Let's get the party started. Wow, so much food. You know, after all these many months of hard work, I want to throw a big party, a little celebration to bring everyone together and thank them for their work. Thank you so much for coming. It's really, really very heartwarming, you know. We've been uh, working for this for many, many months, right? Joe, about half a year. I it's four months, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this place was uh, just very bare. There was nothing on it before. And we only had an idea. We had the idea that this would be an open garden and it will be a garden that will be different from other gardens because uh, this will be one that community can come and gather. You know, we can harvest and cook together and, and share the food that we cook and eat together. So today is a really special day for me because um, it's, it's really like a dream come true. This is only possible because uh, some of you have made so much sacrifices. Thanks, Wong and Joe. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. 
and, and Jen also, thank you so much, you know. You've been doing so much work for us. Every part of this garden, as you, as you walk around, each of you has uh, a part to play. Maybe you, you planted a little seedling, uh, you built a trellis, some of you donated some food waste. And what's after that, I think it's going to be exciting. We're going to start sharing the produce. You know, we've spoken to the town council and we'll be giving some of the vegetables to um, the people who are needing it most. I think this garden represents hope. All right, let's dig in. Come, come. This space didn't exist before. It was just merely from an idea and the belief that something great would come out by bringing people together. The garden is actually a living proof that the good of people is real and the value that people can bring can be so great, can be so incredible. <laughs> I started this journey as a farmer, hoping to uncover oh. nature's secrets oh. to growing food. A good soil will contain good microbes that is suitable for you. Along the way, I've met people who've inspired me and others with whom I've shared my discoveries. The more bitter it is, the better it is for your body. I've expanded my growing repertoire and realised my dream of having my very own rooftop garden. Okay, then the one behind, that's the passion fruit. Yes, nature holds the key to flavour, but it is also beauty. And perhaps, most importantly, it's a glue that brings people together. So thank you so much. And yeah. Bye.